last week we were here and we spoke about the rule changes and Nick Nats and the effect on Nick. Um, do you stand by that, that it may affect him still or given his performance in the weekend, has something changed? Or I stand by. You know, the players of his nature, the power Oh, 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 no, I don't think that's... Um, no, I haven't really thought about that, to be honest. I, um, I think at the moment the stoppages are around the same as they were last year with a shorter game. So um, less contest at the stoppage. So it's just the, the game's changed a little bit with the rule changes and readapting to a, a longer game, but a bit early to tell about any of the longevity of our players. So rotations keep coming down. It's going to keep being a challenge, but I think they'll work it out. So he played 20 minutes longer, 20, 17. 17 minutes longer this week. Why was that? I don't know. I'm going to ask him the fitness guys the same thing. Well, where's that been for five years? Um, oh, look, I, you know, I think the game just worked out that way. I mean, we normally manage him pretty well. I think he's feeling pretty good. Um, he got a cop to knock in the eye. Um, and it wasn't really a contested type of game in terms of stoppages. So. Um, perhaps that's the reason why. Is that what you mean, like, didn't expend as much energy because there's less stoppage? Uh, I think you got to, when you look at rucks, and in particular Nick, you look at how many ruck contests he's in and how long he can sustain that, and then you look at the whole season and and how he's feeling. So all those things come into play. And yeah, on the weekend, it was a reasonably low stoppage game compared to a normal 125 minute game. Really high in speed. Um, so typical Eddie had type of game. Happy with the output you get from Nathan Yeah, we're still working through that. I mean, he didn't play a lot on the weekend because Nick played a, a few more minutes. Um, so we're still working through that combination. Uh, with round one, he, he, he did a pretty good job, and on the weekend, he, he played his role. Yeah, without being outstanding. Port Adelaide been playing the, the two. Do you think you'll go in similar ruck setup this week? Yeah, well, probably. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We've got training tonight, match committee tonight. Um, our challenge, I think we've spoken about it before, we've got um, an extra tall in our side to, to complement Nick, you know, plus Oscar. So we'll keep working through that week to week, whether that suits the team we play and you know, keep an eye on actually the total amount of stoppages there actually are and how important the ruck, ruck is. So that's a, it's a week to week thing at the moment. And what about the cooler position? Did you... <laughs> Gee, you latched on to oh, last week's... Uh, they didn't quite work last week, the, cool, the cooler. I mean, the, <laughs> We, um, uh, the thing with the Bulldogs, what I did say is you, you stop one, another one jumps up and McRae has 41 possessions. I thought collectively their midfield um, probably had a little bit more impact than ours, in, in particular early. Um, we, we put a, a run with on Bont in the second half to reasonable effect in the third quarter and then the last we dropped it when the game was up for grabs. We, we had to get a bit more attacking so, and then he kicked the winning, the winning goal. So. Um, yeah, those moves are made every every week. You feel like you need to develop a player with Hutchie out, so you need to bring someone on. Yeah, to sort of. Oh, yeah, yes and no. I think it's always good to have someone on your side who can actually put some work into an individual. But when you've got, well, they got five or six A graders in their side, and going in with a plan. I know Geelong did it last week with Lockie Neal. Sometimes it works really well, and sometimes just other players bob up and you know fill the void. So. That's a week-to-week -week thing. Hutch is probably our best at it, but Jack o Nelson did it on the weekend. Um, Jack Redden can do it as well. Um, and, you know, we're going to work whether it's priority this week. Can you take us inside your extended chat with Gaffey on the field? Yes, sir, we're all watching him intently. Oh, I saw a photo. I mean, I talk to players all the time one-on-one -on -one, and then report about it like it's a, a big deal. It's just what we do. Like, we talk to our... It's what I do. We review the game. We talk individually. Um, yeah, and you just happen to take photos of me talking to Gaffey. It's no different than every other week, I promise you. And the conversations about his form, it's not, it's not like that. No, I'm not, I'm not, he's fine, he'll be okay. He looks fucked up, like his body language is like You're trying to guess what we spoke about at 100 metres away. I'm asking you what it was. Yeah, well, I spoke about the game, spoke about his family, spoke about his parents, spoke about the travel, how the hotel, um, spoke about uh, his form. Just did all the things that we talk about normally, so it's 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 not a big deal. You're overplaying it. How do you think he plays out in the game? Like his and his his position, his goal, and things like that. Like, he's a different player. He'll be fine. He'll work it out. He's a good player. He's a good player. Yeah. That's about it. I've got nothing else for you. There's no other thing other. He'll work through it. So you're not helping him change 
He probably has to change something, doesn't he, if he's getting caught out and not having the possession. We've had a couple of weeks where he's been a bit down on possession, so I, th you know, I just got to back him in, don't we? Because there's no sweeper anymore, do you? There's nothing go backwards to him or just it's all attack. Would that be fair? Yeah, you guys are probably overanalyzing it a bit more than I do. So I think he'll work through it. I think he's had games before where he's had a couple of weeks where he's been a bit down on possessions and, yeah, it's not all about that. What do you need to see from Oscar Allen to get him through to play on the weekend tonight? Uh, he's probably not going to train six-day break, but I think he's OK. Yeah, the, the message we got back from the docs, he's just a bit banged up and he needs a lighter week on the track. And that's normally the case on six-day breaks so, um, with players. So you know, I think he'll be OK. Do you hold any fears about, uh, has anyone from the AFL been in touch with you about the possibility of the future change moving forward? We've obviously seen one game change. Yeah, no, not yet. I think we're just, we'll just be ready. Um, start of the year, I think we got the first six rounds given to us and we thought maybe we'll get another three or four rounds by now and it, they've just held off a little bit, understandably. There's a bit, bit going on, so we'll just have to wait and see um, whether we're affected or not. The other one is Alex Withered and um, is there any way of getting him into the team or what do you need to see from him to get him in? Yeah, look, he's um, yeah, it's a it's a battle at the moment. We've got probably eight or nine defenders that can roll through there. We're reasonably happy with the guys we've got. He's not doing anything wrong. It's just now getting an opportunity, um, still adapting to the way we play. Um, so I've got full confidence he'll he'll get there. He's just got to wait for that opportunity now. If Shuey gets through tonight, um, how much game time is realistic for him at the moment? Does he roll? Yeah, the, the cut and the head. Yeah, well, the calf was a long time ago, um, but yeah, we need to manage his, his minutes a little bit. Is that rain? Beautiful. Um, I'm going to keep talking now for a while. Uh, <laughs> no, the, um, yeah, he'll be managed, he'll be managed. So I don't know, I've got to talk to him today about what, what type of management we give him, but yeah, we'll have to look after him a little bit. Do you, do you look to change the role at all? Um, something you as it cancels last year as well. Yeah. And he's done 30 minutes. Do you have to slightly think about giving this yeah, it's funny. Um, the last 12 months, it's been he's had a lot of soft tissues, and the game's been a shorter type of game. I think he had injury-free for a few years, so yeah, we're, we're looking into it. I don't think we've quite cracked the code on on what to do to get him through a full season. Um, but it'll be a bit of management, maybe positional change, maybe the way he trains. He just he's our best trainer. He just goes turbo all the time, and he's, he's probably got to build himself into the week a little bit more. So we're still working through that management piece at the moment. Is that one of the with less rotations you've had? 50%, 60% you've got? A little bit, yeah. But that's that's fine. We're all on the same boat. Anyone, any A graders coming back from injury, you sort of can nurse them through a little bit. Um, but we can still do that. It just means someone's going to play a bit longer on field. I haven't thought about that. No, we, we, we just need to look at it. I mean, I haven't got to that depth yet. So we'll, we'll get him back. He'll play his normal role and we'll manage his minutes. You're getting wet. This is great. <laughs> so I think the, the wording yesterday was you've made some progress. But, so do you think it's likely to see Elliot Yo play AFL for your mid-season break? I hope so. Yeah, he, he had a really good week last week. So he, I think he'll be training with the boys tonight maybe or Friday. So that's a good sign. So he's got an important couple of weeks coming up. If you can get through the next two weeks, I think we'll see him in training fully by then. How is he going? Frustrated, yeah. It's it's hard to stay connected to your teammates, and the way Yoey leads, he leads by action, and we've missed him. So it's been it's been a while, um, but he's not the first to go through it. So you know, only got to lean on people like Nick and guys with knees and longer term injuries. It's tough to stay connected, but he's doing his best. Does he need to spend a certain amount of time doing a mini preseason to, to be considered for football? And if so, how long? Uh, well, that's a, that's a good question. It's probably a four or five week build, but I'd say he's already into that. So it um, starts with your running program, then you transition into skills, and then you see how you recover, and then you repeat, and then you do more skills, and hopefully some minutes of footy. And you run court right at the top, eh? I think so. Yeah, I'd, I'd say they're, you know, if they're not number one, they're pretty close. So their brand stands up. It's been really strong for, for a long time now, and they've got good kids coming through. So. Massive challenge again this week. Doesn't doesn't stop. Kelly Dixon has done this last bit out going in the team, obviously. It's a different back line that should take him on. How difficult is he when he gets Yeah, he, oh, I think they all, he went nuts all last year. So, um, 
Yeah, he, I think they're probably looking and finding more avenues now rather than just relying on that. But he's obviously one of the best key forwards in the comp. And yeah, we need, our backs need to be at the best this week, absolutely. The high half forwards are the real damaging one as, as well. The, the speed and repeat efforts are really high end, so they're, they're a pretty good side. Yeah. Um, maybe. Yeah, well, I'll tell you on Sunday. Um, but yeah, it was a high high speed game last week. You know, we hung in there and we got our noses in front. We couldn't hold on, and I anticipate it's going to be a pretty tough on this week. But we, we can't wait. You know, hopefully we get a full house. Um, yeah, two pretty good sides going at it.